Let's see if uh, Kat Brown is on. Kat Brown, are you on? I am. Okay. I don't see you, but I hear you. Oh, wow. Okay. Hold on just a second here. Hmm. Right. There you go. <laughs> so how are you doing this morning? I am doing fine. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. I, I hear through the grapevine you had a somewhat of a day off today because of the weather, huh? Yeah, we're currently on a standby essential personnel, but yes. Yeah. It's kind of nice to have a little downtime. Let's just oh. say that. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> that is nothing better than downtime. And then you look up and it's gone. You want to know what did you do with that time? That is correct. That is correct. Um, I got to cut it. Uh, when they knew you are going to be on, they started sending questions in on you already. I'm uh, sorry? They started sending in questions already for you. Oh, my goodness. I've got some questions for you. The very oh, most important question is this <laughs> one right here. Okay. Uh, a viewer wants to know, what is a role of the constable? So we have various... Uh-oh. Can you see me or... There we go. I see you now. Okay. okay. We have various roles. Um, you have the main police departments, which is SAPD. They're in charge, charge of the city. You have the Bear County Sheriff's Office, and that's the department that I came from serving 19 years. Um, SAPD serves the city. Uh, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is in charge of the entire county. The precinct's off the precinct uh, constable's office is in charge of a certain sector within the county. And there's actually four of us, okay? Um, the city pretty much deals with everything, all things law enforcement, same thing with the sheriff's office. What the constable's office is primarily responsible for is a civil section of uh, law enforcement. I'm talking about your evictions, your rid of executions, um, your uh, temporary restraining orders, anything dealing with um, any type of truancy issues, um, if you're, if you're uh, suing someone civilly, that's pretty much our primary role. We do also um, engage in um, some traffic issues where there's high traffic areas that are uh, needing attention to. And here recently, I just uh, assumed the duties of the um, juvenile uh, detention facility. Uh, so I also have a school uh, for delinquents that we also manage. Oh, wow. So you, <laughs> you got your hands full right there, just seeing what you're talking about. Yeah, we, we got our hands full, but, yeah. but it's a good thing. It's, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, you're staying busy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I did not put ourselves <laughs> on Facebook. There we go. We're on Facebook. All right. Um, other thing with your role with truancy, um, mm -hmm. how, how is that? Is it um, high or, or what, what do you see with truancy right now? So because of COVID, um, we haven't had very many cases in reference to that. And it appears that the school system in which I manage um, is, is a little bit lenient on that because, again, we're trying to get the kids back to that social uh, gathering stage where, you know, we try to encourage them to come back to school and, you know, pretty much engage in an in-person type school setting. So they've kind of backed off of uh, enforcing that here lately. You know, with the pandemic, um, was there a rise in um, any type of violence or domestic? Absolutely. Oh, my God, yes. You truly got to know who you were married to. <laughs> 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 it appears that you truly got to know who your parents were. I mean, that whole uh, pandemic um, put, uh, um, I guess, a greater, excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay. A greater understanding in terms of who it is that you're cohabitating with. <laughs> Let's just say that. Not only that, um, a lot of uh, um, uh, law enforcement issues in, involving theft went up too, because you know a lot of people are losing their jobs and things of that nature. So um, the totality of law enforcement definitely um, played a huge, huge factor, increase in numbers for, for all law enforcement agencies. You know, um, I'm gonna go and say, take away the electronics. Back in the days, I'm from Illinois, and uh -huh. when it snowed outside, you was inside. I'm from a family of nine. Yes, we got on each other's nerve, but we learned how to sit down and play um, board games, and we did things together. And uh -huh. I truly believe with this um, new wave of electronics out there, 
people patient is not that long anymore. No, it's not. No, it's not. And if you look at the numbers involving divorces, they, they have increased substantially as well. Um, I just think for us, it's just one of those things where, you know, um, uh, the evictions also went up quite a bit because, again, people are losing their jobs. Um, a lot of people um, were becoming ill. Um, a lot of the evictions were backed up because we couldn't enter the houses because of COVID. So, again, it was it was a, a pandemic all the way around in terms of all, all um, I guess, uh, job agencies. Let's just say that. I just know the pandemic opened some new doors, but like you said, also showed a lot of ugly heads. Um, like I, I agree with you right there. You know who you married to uh, when when you closed up together. But uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go by what this this one preacher said one time. Before you uh -huh. decide you want to get married, know who that person is, know that family, know their finances, know all that. And you can weather through that, you're okay. So when a situation that you don't get on any people, well, you will, but not like that. Yes, yes. And I tell you why, me and a, um, a couple of friends from back home, I'm from California, we were talking. And uh, they were basically saying, wouldn't it be nice if we could put a potential spouse or a girlfriend through something comparable to like a, um, an airport detector so that you can see all their back. And I was like, God, dog, that would be awesome. You know what I mean? So you can just highlight everything that you do and do not want to have to take on, you know. Yeah. So. I remember um, I was supervisor for Direct TV and we were hiring and stuff. And I turned around and asked HR, I said, Can we interview the parents first? So you know what this kid is like. Because we get them, they just like, Wow, what am I doing? I said, Can and she said, No, we can't do that. I said, That'd be a good idea, you know. Wow. <laughs> So yeah, uh, it's go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, you go ahead. No, I was I was saying even in the law enforcement entity when I when I was uh, recruiting at the sheriff's office, it's amazing when you get candidates and we're doing their background and we go to their social media accounts and we talk to their neighbors and whatnot. You truly, truly get a, a, a great understanding as to who you're going to hire. So it's 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 really interesting. I'm Very glad, interesting. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I'm glad y'all vetting like that because um, social media has um, turned away a lot of undesirable people from certain jobs. Because, oh, yeah. You know, once a post is there, you, you can take it off. But if somebody go ahead and forward it or, or share it, it's out there forever. Mm -hmm. you know, there's really no true way of, of uh, removing it. So you got to be careful what you're doing on social media nowadays. And I tell the potential recruits that I once had, you know, as a recruiter, be careful who you date and make sure that they love their career, your career more than you do. Because in law enforcement, there's no room for error, you know, in terms of domestic violence or, or what have you, because you're pretty much just like the military, you're guilty until, until proven innocent. And I, I explained that to my troops today, you know, the single ones, be careful who you date. All it takes is a phone call. And unfortunately we have to, you know, discredit whatever that allegation is. Yeah, that that is. Oh man, I'm telling you, it's. I see a lot of people. Um, like um, one job I had, we lost. Um, I think 15 supervisors and 30 um, oh. employees because they the background check that we had somebody was doing, they found out it was faulty. So they turned yeah. around and redid it again. Well, we found some. They found some characters on there. They clean house. I mean. We had child molesters, um, DWI, you name it. We had a felons, and they were working for like for the coming like five or six years. Wow! And when what? they found that out, and I said, "You kidding me?" But the guy seemed great. But you know, isn't that something? Isn't that something? How somebody can truly mask their identity? That's the scary mm -hmm. part. Yeah, you never know what they're gonna do. Like for me, I don't care anybody. So I'm always um watching where I'm walking, what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go back. Yeah, I tell everybody, I say, in uniform, Catherine's a community girl. I love everybody. But when I take this uniform off, <laughs> I'm very, very select. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember when I see, I say, hey, this is Ron. Remember? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go back to Martin Luther King. There was sure. something stuck out on me on that day. I watched this little fella walk around in a complete uniform. Who was that young man? 
So that was DeBar J. Daniels, and he is a um, terminal cancer patient. Um, hopefully, by the grace of God, he'll beat it. Um, this is going to be his fifth year doing experimental treatments. So we're really praying and hoping that he pulls through it. But that little guy has been um, sworn in, I think, over 700 agencies as we speak. 700 law enforcement agencies throughout the nation has sworn him uh, into their their, their agency uh, to be an honorary officer. He is amazing. He's amazing. Uh, yeah, because I don't think nobody's, I've seen it. And I, I say, I can't wait to get you on the show and ask who he was because he looked so upbeat and happy, <laughs> big smile on his face. I mean, I hope he hope he beats it too. Yeah, he's he's 10 going on 30. <laughs> he has such an old <laughs> Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I told my yeah. grandson the other day, his birthday came up. I'm going to be seven. I said, you mean 17, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. So um, what what um area of San Antonio or the county are, is your precinct? It's precinct four, right? That is correct. The same as Tommy Calvert. We're in charge of the east, uh, northeast and southeast pretty much of, of Bear County, all the way down towards Brook City Base. Uh, I-35 South, upwards um, uh, towards Shirts, uh, part of Alamo Heights, um, Holotas, Almondorf area. So it's a pretty large territory. We are the second largest precinct in Bear County. And I'm here off of uh, Foster Road by the um, uh, Walmart over here, Foster Road, yep. Zingleman. We're right in that slither where we're in the county. Yes, you're and, a part and, of precinct as well. And, and I'm trying to figure out you go one street over, we're in Converse. Yes. A little over, you're in San Antonio. And we're stuck right here in the middle and doing, I talked to Tommy about that. I said, we're paying city taxes, but we don't get no city stuff. But Are you able to vote for the city? No. No? No. Oh, wow. And so uh, he's, he said he's working on that. Yes, and, um, yes. Uh, Kirby at one time was going to incorporate us, but I think they looked over here and seen um, um, uh, some of these um, subjects. Oh, I'm good. We'll stay right over here. I don't we know, but we, were, we were right there in that little sliver, sliver where we're because we went to go vote one time and they told uh -huh. us we couldn't vote for it. I said, You're kidding me. Wow. So, Say, according to my tax record, I should be able to, huh? Yeah, but they consider us on the east side, though. Our air wow. on the east side, so I, I don't know. I just I just said I, I'll let the um 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 politic politicians mess with that because oh it take it took a struggle to pin and take our taxes, so I yeah. don't rate us. So on any given um day on your work day, what is your average day like? I know every day is different, but what is average for you? So average for me is pretty much um, having to deal with, and again, this is what I incorporated when I was running for office, is dealing with a family who is in need. Um, uh, of course, we have to, to effect the law in terms of um, evicting families, but there, there are also individuals there when we get to the home and we do, the, do our assessment and those poor kids, you know, the cupboards are bare and, you know, a lot of them don't have any shoes and it's just sad, you know, the, the, the situations is, is very unfortunate. So I try to make sure that we're well equipped with, you know, um, different resources that can help these families. Uh, from that to a temporary restraining order that's issued from the uh, DA's office to, um, you know, someone at the, the Juvenile Justice Academy that's threatening to kill themselves or threatening to kill a family member. Um, you know, just an officer just getting into a struggle, you know, in the course of his duties, having to deal with that. Um, so it could be a conglomerate of, of anything, pretty much. Which, um, with your district, I mean, um, as big as it is, a precinct, um, you do have schools in there. And do y'all deal with things that happen at school or is it up to the city? So it's up to uh, the school district police. So every school, for the most part, has their own in-house police department. So in the event that anything occurs, they're, they're pretty much on campus or close by to, to assist those issues. Of course, you don't heard about the latest issues going on in schools right now. 
yeah. uh, the one in Virginia. It's just, it's amazing how things slip through the cracks or people looked over things. <laughs> Um, the way the climate is nowadays, if anybody jump up and say, like, I'm going to shoot up the school or whatever, we should take that serious. Be darn straight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's no room for error when it comes to that. Every threat is is a viable threat until you, you prove it wrong. So. It, it was an article I read today, this school, in, uh, it was a middle school in East Texas, that a student went up and told another student, I'm going to shoot my teacher. What a teacher found out and a teacher told the principal, they did nothing about it. So then he, he turned around, he turned around later that day and went to the field house. He was a coach too. And the same mm -hmm. it is it threatened him. He told the other coaches and they escorted him off the property. Still nothing was done. So this teacher wow. went, went on TikTok and said what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, the very next day, the principal called in the office and said, I want you in my office at 740, something like that. Went in mm -hmm. there. They suspended him for um, putting out falsehoods. Wow. When and, it was already validated by another individual. Right. And they put out, then later on, the next day, they put out an incident that happened at the school and this is what happened. But yet they said it was false what he said. He put on TikTok. And, and, and I'm saying we shouldn't have to rely on teachers. Teachers do too much as it is right now. Um, and see, my thing is this. It's like, hmm, <laughs> how can I say this politically correct? Sometimes you have administrators. Sometimes you have higher authorities that want you to tow a certain line. And I'm sorry, but I can't tow a certain line. I got I to gotta tow what's right. You know, my conscience will, will freaking eat me up and kill me if I don't tell what's right. And mm -hmm. sometimes people just need to take a stand and good for that, 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 um, that uh, educator who put it on TikTok. You know, you can't be afraid of the consequences if you're doing what's right. Yeah. And um, I just, I look at the teachers now. They, I got some relatives that teachers and uh, a lot of them is going to drop out. They said they, mm -hmm. they can't, number one, the teachers, they got to buy supplies for the kids. And, yeah, you know, and, when I, not and, to cut you, oh, go ahead. In California, they, they, they purchase all that for the kids. And so when we moved to Texas, it was like, we got to buy all this. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the taxes covering? I was, I was astonished. I was, I was really surprised. And, and they're the lowest pay. Yeah. Yeah. But then yeah. they want, I, I tell everybody, it starts at home. The kids should be able to come to school and behave themselves. It starts, and mm -hmm. their parents get upset when you put Joey in a principal office or detention. What do you do now? My Joey's not, then why is he out at two o'clock in the morning, you know, tearing up stuff, a teenager, when he should be at home? So Let me tell you, I got two boys, a 36 and a 30-year-old, and I will never tell you what my crumb snatchers won't do. <laughs> <laughs> you call them crumb snatchers, I call them ankle biters. <laughs> Love to death, and thank God they've never been in jail. But I, I won't tell you that they won't go to jail. I would never say what they won't do. You can never ride on your on your on your kid with that much. How can I say it? Um, self assurance, because you don't know what what a person's going to do. You don't know what's going to trigger them. You know, in terms of their actions. So it's just be best to play it safe and say, you know what, you hope that they do good. But if they don't, hey, that's that's something that you know they have to pay for. Yeah, all we got to do is plant that seed, and, and um, if the seed is a good seed, and, and you'll see it. It, it, yes. it. You'll see it right away. I told my kids when gang was really rampant here, and I said, if anybody tell you about a gang, tell me you're in a gang already. It's called the Gordon Gang, and all, the Gordon, and all the Gordons love each other. You don't have to seek out and find love anywhere. It's plenty right here. Amen. I, I Amen. used to throw that in them, and they got confronted about joining the gang. One of my kids, uh, one of my sons got beat up. Because oh, wow. he, wouldn't join. he wouldn't join. And you know me being the parent, I, I marched right on down there to that school. And uh -huh. told him, I, I told him, I know you're scared. Point him out. Uh-oh. <laughs> he pointed him out. All I did was look at him. That's all I did. And I went. Uh -huh. And the, the next few weeks, my son said, uh, how's everything at school? He said, nothing, Dad. They thought you was mean. I said, I didn't say nothing to him. Daddy brought some street justice. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I... Felt like it was a school duty in doing that. Um, at that time, there wasn't police in each school. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and so now that changed now. So um, things are in check, but 
out of check at the same time. Depends on what school district you're in. Yes. Yes. So um, the other part, you just tell me um, what you do, what you were just saying when you go to places and you find the cupboard emptied. And uh, I think we talked that at one time. We talked about the things that you do. Um, what where are the support groups or what can people do to help contribute when things like this happen and you run across this? So what I do is I, I, um, I partner up um, with various nonprofits throughout my precinct and outside of my precinct, they're, they're so gracious to help us um, just to get food items and uh, donated items. And a lot of people from the community, uh, sometimes I'll post it, things that we need and whatnot. And they have come through like champs, man. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have. Any. Oh, shucks. It's saying that my battery's low. Can you still see me? Yeah. No, I can't see you, but I can hear you. There you go. There we go. Um, so again, thanks to the partnerships and, and different people who, who come by and donate. Um, it's been really, really uh, uh, pleasant in terms of us being able to accommodate people out in the community. What can yeah. the people do that's listening right now to help out? If you want to bring some canned goods or, you know, some uh, um, items that we can store in our, on our shelves, um, some uh, 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 the seniors all, always need those uh, adult diapers um, uh, different things that we need is like pampers and formula and stuff like that, uh, that, uh, we're, we're always in need of, well, baby stuff, especially the formula, the pampers, the wipes, um, is a big, a big ticket item in terms of the need, the necessity. Okay. Hey, just when you said seniors, I mm -hmm. started a nonprofit about three years ago and I got it activated again because of the pandemic and mm -hmm. ours is for seniors. We got to adopt a grandparent. Um, oh, program. we're going to get started. And, and what that's going to consist of anybody adult, adult, uh, could adopt a grandparent because some of these seniors are in, are in the homes and families too far away where you mm -hmm. just go there and sit with them, talk with them, you know, just, just, they got so much knowledge that people just don't know to sit down and talk. Yeah. And so that's one program that we're gearing up to get started. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, let me know. Maybe I can send some of the officers over there and Lord knows some mom, some mom needs some some I talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Inclu to include myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can use some of that talk to myself sometimes. <laughs> it's the wisdom. The wisdom. Like I can just sit there and just. It didn't make it, it, so, it, didn't make it sound you so know? easy. I remember I was somewhere and this oh, um, old farmer was there and I was in a hurry doing things. He looked at me and said, what's the hurry? I looked at him. I said, what do you mean, what's the hurry? It's going to be there tomorrow. Yeah, their time is definitely different from ours. <laughs> and he, I got AD, so I'm like. <laughs> yeah, and, and he was right. It will be there tomorrow. <laughs> so what's the hurry? So I think we put our own self in a hurry to do things. So. Um, yeah. you know, just, just that day. I know you said your phone's getting ready to die. We don't want it to die on us. Um, um, is there any last things you want to get out, um, to tell everybody what to do or yes. contact you? <laughs> yes, sir. If anyone is interested in donating to our pantry, we, we would so graciously appreciate any donations, whether it be, you know, softly used clothing items, blankets, um, like I said, uh, baby items, senior items, um, uh, canned goods, things of that nature, stuff stuff that would have a shelf life that we could put in the pantry. Um, our address is 2711 Southeast Loop 410. Um, again, 78222, uh, Precinct 4. And my email address is Catherine, that's K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, brown, like the color brown, B-R-O-W-N, at bear, B-E-X-A-R, dot O-R-G. So okay. if you can help, we would greatly appreciate it. Well, we're going to get the word out and get some help your way. That's what we're going to do. Make really sure that, that everything goes on. We're going to stay in contact with you because, like, I see you. You may not see me, but I see you at different events and stuff going on. And like, like I said, Cat Brown is always out there. So don't think that most people get elected to office. They just sit behind desks and don't do nothing. Um, you don't do that. That part. Yeah, you you are out there. But when you get a day off, we expect for you to sit down and take it easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 got, I got you on that one. I do the same thing. It's I said, so hard. Hey, 
I'm not going in the office today to do anything on the radio station. And my wife will look at me, where are you going? To the office. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. Yeah, hashtag workaholic. <laughs> yeah, exactly what that is. Okay, Cat Brown, it was nice having you on. And you, Thank you. Um, you take the rest of your day off. And um, uh, I would say with pay, but <laughs> I'm not the one to sign your check. I would say that, but. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And anything that we can do for you or any anything that my department can be of assistance to you, just we're just a phone call away. And same thing here. If you need anything, if you got any events going on, you need for it to get out. Um, you need us to come out, do a live remote, just let us know. And we're there for you. Oh, awesome. Okay. I'll okay. keep that in mind. Okay. You take care. You do the same. All right. All right. Bye. -bye. All right. Bye-bye.